Today, we're going to build Ashiko. Okay, not literally. We all know I'm just filming this long after I've done the video. So I'm going to be going through the process of how I forge and create these. Well, I think they're fun little tools. So we're going to go through forge welding. We've got some leather work, a lot of copper, absolutely zero with cotton, because honestly, I just buy the rope and then dye it to the color that I like and get started. So really, with that statement, and we're off. So I need two parts of steel for this. I need a, a 1020 and a high carbon. So first, the teeth are gonna be a high carbon steel that's been recycled off of some old piece of farm equipment that was on the property. And the bands are going to be from, well, it's brand new steel. I like to have a steel selection. Just piles of steel laying around makes it fun. You can make whatever you want. But to make it first, I've got to cut a bunch of charcoal. For a project like this, a regular bag of like barbecue charcoal will usually do the entire project. But this is kind of, in a sense, it's kind of a small project, but 10 pounds you can tend to burn for an entire day. Each piece of steel is 12 inches and then that'll be drawn out. So all of the edges will be transferred top and bottom and then the outer edges along the length. Well, I'll show you in a moment. This is collecting of, I'd like to lart, light the fire with wood chips, unless it's really wet and then I use a blowtorch, which is, e well, equally as fast. I find this way just a little bit more fun. The steel I'm using is already annealed, so I just need to bring it up to temperature and I can get right to work. And for the steel, for the actual bars that will be forged, it's very simple. The plates just need to be textured. That's when I bring that quarter inch down, probably closer to 3 16 in the center and then out to a 16th on the, the long edge. And on what I'm gonna call the short edge, the parts that are gonna be forge welded together, they're gonna be scarfed down. I'll show you that in a moment. This is just the texturing. This is just pushing the impurities out. that's done on both sides on both pieces. Now this is the, I call it scarfing, but that's a Thundercats thing. This is, it's a wedge shape. So the energy is distributed, distributed, that's a better way of saying it, for the forge welding process. There you go, with a lot of energy in them, they're hard to see, but in this form, they're ready to go. Now I need to make the teeth. So this is a high carbon steel and I'm going to draw each one down to a, a sharp point. But, okay, it is a sharp point, but it is not. It's still gonna be about a 16th and then it'll be cut down later to be an eighth of an inch or larger so we can go through the heat treating process. But for now, I just need a bunch of nails. Eight in total, actually. Six holes in total, two at the top are only going to be brought up to an eighth of an inch for the copper rivets. The ones for the teeth, a little bit of a different story. I start off with an eighth of an inch and work up to a quarter of an inch, and then I flip it over. None of this is filmed, sadly. I flip it over, and I bring the opposite side up to three quarters of an inch, but I don't puncture the surface. That way, I have a trough all the way around the steel tooth to fill with weld. That last scene, I was cleaning up the teeth because they need to be electrically welded, so I do need to clean those up really well. And then I bring the whole item up to temperature, which just means I put in the forge. These are just tacked for a moment, and then it goes back into the forge, heated up to red, and then brought out to weld. And I don't know how I, I managed not to show any of that process. Just the same, I fill up those little channels, and the teeth are well situated into the bands. now I have to hide all that work make sure it's all clean and you can't see any of it so they're all ready time to put on the final shaping and I use a jig for that 
Steel is so malleable at this, this point. It's just so wonderful to work with. I think I know people that are like steel. In the right conditions, they'll do anything for you. But in the wrong condition, they're not going to do a thing. And I say people, I'm pretty sure I'm just describing myself. This is the final fitting before forge welding. It's just a little love tap to make sure those two faces are just touching beautifully. And now the flux. So this is borax. This stops the oxygen from getting into the weld or between the steel at this point. I say that like I really understand this, but I don't. It's magic. And that is it. Just three more times each, and you get this. And with a few holes, it's ready to be sliced down. This I talked about earlier, so it's getting ready for heat treat. All the holes are in, and it just needs one more cleaning, and we're ready to go. Get rid of any of the sharp bits on the inside that happened from the forge welding. Best fire of it all, this is the heat treat fire. The steel teeth need to be brought up to a dark cherry red. And I'm going to quench this in oil. I want I'm, the blades would be water, something resilient like these kind of spikes. I, I need to treat in oil. Waiting for that dark red to get into the center of those two teeth. I've also skipped over sharpening each one of those teeth. They needed to become quite shiny for this stage. So now this is going into the oven to be tempered and I need to watch each one of those teeth until they get to that straw color. That means they've got their full temper and I pull them out and I don't quench them in water at this point. Again, I want the resiliency so I let them just air dry. Air dry, air cool. Now onto leather. It only needs a tiny bit of leather, but there's a bunch of little pieces in this. And we're done. Chamfered edges, and now for burnishing. So this rounds all of the edges, makes everything comfortable, and you get a really nice finish with the stain. And this is a high class technique. I call it sloshing. The pieces of leather are so small, I can get all the ink on in an even coat in one go. So I get an even finish. When you use larger pieces of leather, you dampen it really lightly so your stain, or your dye at this case, gets an even distribution. I do about three coats. After that, I find for the, le the the amount of stain I use, you can start cracking the surfaces. But more importantly, this is the bow shittikin, and it is its moment. This is the most utilized tool. This thing is everything. This one stays with the leather tools for the leather work. Here I use, well, it's oversized copper rivets. I like the color change between the copper and the steel. Each rivet gets cut about an eighth of an inch, three sixteenths of an inch above the, the connection point. And then each rivet is hammered in place. To rant for a moment of setting copper rivets, there is a tool precisely for this that peens over the top of the rivet. I just find it sad looking. Or more accurately, I find each one peened by hand has so much interest into it. It's just my preferred way. And that, that's my done about my PSA about copper rivets. Thank you for joining me. This is the second last piece before these get to actually be put on. You can see what this whole fuss is about. That's a lie. It's the third last piece. I made them, I know. Okay, let's do the topies after this. There we go. 
if you're not used to wearing thong sandals, these things will always be uncomfortable for you. While you walk, while you strike, you grip that centerpiece with your toes. final part. I think it's 5 eighths cotton cord. The part that I'm putting on now is what gets looped and goes over your heel. And then the top strings are what connect to the ankle. And the final moment, actually getting to start to train with these pieces of steel. Tempered, heat treated, ready to go. So that is my video of making Ashiko. I hope you enjoyed it. Now I'm going to, or next, I'm going to be working on the steel claws for the hands. Not so much the Wolverine comic style, but the old school ripping claw. Yeah, I'll work on my definition, just make it more interesting. But for now, I'm getting back to work.